What do you do? Keeping Britain clean on 30 quid a week? Respect. Respect, you don't know what it is. Unless you're Vic Dakin, tell him somebody, tell him. So 1971's crime thriller Villain was based on the 1968 novel Burden of Proof and inspired by the 1949 film White Heat starring the late great James Cagney. This one stars Richard Burton beginning the back end of his career but still fresh off hits like Where Eagles Dare and putting in a performance apparently modelled after Ronnie Cray. So why was this dubbed the Pooh Man's Get Carter, which was released the same year, and why has it practically fallen off the movie radar ever since? Let's take a look. So the plot of Villain, which is based on the 1968 novel Burden of Proof by James Barlow, involves Burton and his fellow nasties getting a tip from a dodgy club owner and a disgruntled plastics company employee that will enable them to rob that company's payroll transport in broad daylight. All in a day's work for them, but matters get a bit complicated when a rival gang's leader insists on joining them, as the robbery will technically take place on their turf. And the robbery itself is the centrepiece of this film. It's a violent and relentlessly paced bit of filmmaking that's still pretty brutal today. I love some of the in-car, first-person point of view shots during this sequence. It really makes it a quite scary, up-close and personal experience. <laughs> However, the real drama begins when some careless fingerprints are found at the scene, which sets into motion a series of plot complications involving pimps, underage sex, politicians and blackmail. And along with all that, it also brings with it the attention of dedicated police inspector Bob Matthews, played here by the great Nigel Davenport. He's now obsessed with taking Vic Dakin down. Benny, you've been talking to much. So help me to get the chat out quicker. Please. So Richard Burton initially makes an interesting entrance dishing out some grisly violence involving some poor sap and a straight razor. He gives him a good going over before hanging the poor guy's body out of his high rise window. So Richard Walker Jenkins Jr. or Richard Burton to the cinema going masses is one of my personal favourite actors. I pretty much enjoy everything I see him in and even sometimes when the film he's in is a bit mediocre his presence alone makes it a worthwhile view. He has an amazing screen presence and he has that commanding baritone voice. And the one rare instance where that formula doesn't quite work for me is in 1971's Villain. Now, this isn't the greatest of films, for me anyway. Let's get that out of the way up front. I do enjoy it. It's interesting, certainly. It has that gritty, muddy vibe that a lot of late 60s, early 70s, post-war British films featured. But one of the faults of the film, for me anyway, lies in the casting of Burton himself in the lead role of gangster Vic Dakin. Guys, I'm Stephen at Real Classic Film Reviews. Click that subscribe button if you want to see more classic films reviewed and discussed right here on Real Classic Film Reviews. So Burton, bless him, is hilariously miscast here, I think. Having carved out a career playing anguished snobs, he seems way out of his depth playing a vicious thug with a kind of cockney accent. We'll come back to Burton in a minute or two, but first let's chat about the film surrounding him. Now, I know I've mentioned on this channel before about my personal love for British gangster films of this era and how they're mostly influenced by the notorious East End gangsters Reggie and Ronnie Cray. Uh, fascination with the brothers birthed a whole slew of crime films that attempted to humanise gangsters, uh, peeking into their private lives and showing us that they had feelings too. And on that note, here we have Burton's character who cares for his elderly mother, spending quiet mornings sipping tea with her and taking her to the seaside between knife murders and robberies. All very Cray-like, he even has a, a lover in the form of screen legend Ian McShane, who he feels the need to beat up before they get down to business. <coughs> Take you up to town tomorrow. Get you some good suits. Now the part that Burton plays here could have probably been a great part for for somebody else maybe, and even if they cheated a little bit and let Burton keep his own silky accent. But it's just so jarring for me hearing East End infused slang coming out of his mouth. And for me, I had to really push myself to not let it take me out of the whole thing. Uh, but I'll admit there's also a, a novelty or a fascination in seeing Burton in villain. And he is genuinely menacing it, to be fair. Press it upon you. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
And this film was the beginning of a steady decline for the Welsh actor whose notorious dependence on alcohol had gained him a reputation as one of that era's self-destructive talents. See also Richard Harris, Oliver Reed, Peter O'Toole, etc. And I think Burton was about 45 years old when he made this film, but he looks knackered. Burton's career would slide into nonsense like The Exorcist 2 and the ill-advised Cross of Iron sequel Breakthrough uh, throughout the rest of the 70s. So with censorship slacking off to a degree in the 70s, uh, this would introduce us to many violent crime films, uh, such as this and the previously mentioned Get Carter. Uh, Burton's homosexual relations with Ian McShane here, although only really implied, must have been a much more taboo subject for the audiences of the time, probably pushing it towards its ex-certificate. And in fact, the whole film has a, a grubby look and feel to it, with just about every character being pretty detestable, really. I mean, I expect we're supposed to side with Nigel Davenport and Colin Wellen's police officers, but they're a bit bland, to be honest. And I suppose there are villains in cinema that you do secretly root for, but here Vic Dakin is such a nasty piece of work. If you don't tell me where that money is in 10 seconds, I'll open you. None of that, to be honest, makes it any less enjoyable. Villain's still a, a really solid crime movie with an interesting cast, and if you're a fan of gangster films and, and British cinema, you'll certainly find something to enjoy, even if just to see Burton chewing his way through the script and everyone else around him. Villain was the feature film debut of a director named Michael Touchner, who mostly went on to make TV shows and TV movies, although in 1972 he did make the Alistair MacLean adaptation of Fear is the Key, which is also mostly forgotten about today. Here he's fashioned a gritty little cops and robbers thriller with a, a central performance that has to be seen to be believed. Go check it out. Who are you looking at?